Hi, I'm Varun Haran. I'm senior editor with Information Security Media Group. I have the pleasure today of interviewing Chris Weisopel, who is the CTO for CA Veracode. And we're going to be speaking about open source vulnerabilities and what organizations need to do to address them. Hi, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks. Great to be here. So, Chris, like I said in my intro, open source vulnerabilities. We know that application developers are relying a lot on open source code these days, right? But why is it that it's suddenly such a significant security issue? Well, it's been sort of creeping up on us for a while. Um, as every year goes by, developers are using more and more open source. So the richness of the open source components that are available to developers keeps growing and growing. And then also, the development methodology has been moving to more towards Agile and DevOps, which are just faster and faster. So in order to keep up the speed, they're, instead of writing code, they're incorporating open source in and, and using it that way. Right. So you know, what types of vulnerabilities do you commonly see in open source code? And what can organizations do? And how, how, how are organizations affected by these? So the vulnerabilities are actually fairly similar to the same vulnerabilities you might make, a developer might make by writing code, because of course it's, they've all had the same education, they have the same skill set. The difference is when a, let's say a, a command injection vulnerability, a very serious vulnerability, the difference is when it's in an open source component, you as the development team aren't going to go there and, and patch and change the code. What you're going to do is you're going to search out the component with the fix and incorporate that in. Right. So what, what it changes, it, the vulnerabilities don't change that much. What really changes is how you detect you have the problem and how you remediate it. Okay. So, you know, one could argue that because this code has been used across by so many different people that it would be relatively mature. But is it a, is it a problem from what you're saying that it's second-hand code and nobody's really fixing it? Yeah, so you, you would hope if it's publicly available, there's lots of people looking at it and doing security reviews because they're concerned. But I think everyone thinks everyone else is doing the security review. Right. So there's an assumption that someone has looked at the code. And a lot of times, someone has looked at the code. But it, it doesn't mean that there can't be any vulnerabilities in it. So you always have to have a process to manage known vulnerabilities in open source once they become discovered. So okay. you can remediate your, your application. Sure. So what are your recommendations with respect to open source code? So the most important thing to do is keep an inventory of what open source components you're using. So some organizations will have their own repository where they bring the open source in, they'll keep it in this repository, and then they manage that repository, make sure that's all known good components, and then the developer is used from that repository. That's mostly done in highly restrictive organizations like banks and things like that. But if you think about most tech companies, they're not doing that. They're just pulling straight from, from, uh, from, from, from the repositories that are public, like GitHub and things like that. So the important thing to do is have a way of managing what components of open source you've put into your application. What's the name? What's the version? And then continuously look to see if there's any new known vulnerabilities. So you need to make this an automated process. The average development team is using 73 open source components. No one person can just check that every day. You need an automated process to know what you have in your inventory and look at the vulnerability databases. If the new vulnerability gets reported, you need to then update your components. All right. So you're talking about connecting the dots uh, between when you bring in open source and when you use it. But yep. doesn't using a, having a curated internal library of open source code create additional overheads when you're trying to get code out as fast it, as you can? It, it is. It's an additional overhead. Um, and, the, and the real challenge is what, what does a developer do when the component they want to use isn't in the repository. There's probably some approval process they have to go through where someone's going to download that and vet it and make sure that they can use it. So yeah, that does slow things down. It's more secure, but it slows things down. A good balance is empowering every development team to manage their own uh, com components that they're using and alert themselves sure. when they need to need to update. Sure. So, you know, <clears throat> Veracode got acquired by CA a little mm -hmm. while back, right? So now one of the data points that stuck with me from that acquisition is like you guys uh, go, have gone through something like six trillion lines of code in the last 10 years or so. Yeah. So what have you learned in terms of security vulnerabilities when you've scanned all this code? So, um, yeah, we, I think we have the biggest volume of any one organization that scanned applications. I think, um, 
last year alone, we scanned something like over 100,000 different applications, so spanning all different industries, all different languages. So we come out with a report each year called the State of Software Security Report. And in there, we try to get some new insights as to what's going on to help recommend to our customers. And one is more open source is being used is one. Um, Another one is development teams are moving faster and faster. We can see this by how often they're scanning their code. There's a lot of companies that scan once or twice or four times a year. We have other companies which we're seeing scan on a daily basis. So we're starting to see this DevOps movement of, of, of rapidly um, developing code and pushing out new versions of your software really start to take hold. Sure. That's an insight that's important to us because we need to know that our solutions work with those developer workflows. Right. So that means we have to be faster, and we also have to be smarter about shifting left so that we're not waiting to the very end. We're trying to find vulnerabilities early on in the cycle. So those are some of the insights that we've been able to, able to glean from that data. So Chris, you know, from all of these insights that you've gained, what is the top recommendation that you can share on how to incentivize developers to write more secure code? So the, the biggest thing you need to do is do things that work the way the developer works. Having a process that's outside of the development process where you have an outside team come in at the very end and give recommendations and, and tell developers what to do at the very end is working outside of their process. It's going to make the release delayed right. and that no one's happy with that. What you have to do is you have to give them tools so they can do the security checks earlier and earlier in the process so it doesn't wait to the end, so it doesn't slow things down. Sure. The best place to do it is to shift as far left as possible, which is when the developer is actually writing the code for the first time. If you can put a security check right into the editor as they're writing the code, we have a product called Greenlight, which does this. It's like a spell checker. Sure. So as soon as they make the mistake, they can it can be detected, and then they can fix it. Developers would rather work that way than have an outside team looking over their shoulder. Right. And that, that's what we found is one of the best ways to get developers interested in doing secure code. Sure. So shift lab, move it upstream as much as you can. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for your insight. Thank you. So that was Chris Weisopel, who's the CTO for CA Veracode. For ISMG, this is Varun Haran. Thanks for watching.